his will. Amen. I want you to turn to the, uh, to the 91st number of Psalm. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Amen. Psalm 91. Would you all stand as we read? I'm, not, I'm going to read from, okay, let me read from the King James Version. I know y'all, y'all already know it. I'm going to read the other version so we can make sure that we get a clear, and precise understanding. Okay, I want to go, uh, Psalm 91, verse 1 through number 10. All right, the Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. Oh my. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwellings. Let us pray, Father, we thank you again for this great and wonderful opportunity to speak a word, to minister to your people, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, now God, Word in my mouth, hide me behind the cross. Let them hear you. Speak, Lord. Speak, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Strengthen us through your word. Help us through your word. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus, I pray for all that are here to hear your word, that they will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Listen, you may be seated. I'm going to talk to you this morning, and I want you to help me to announce my, my conversation. Uh, we have protection and security. I want to talk about we have protection and security. Now, before I get into my little notes here, I'm going to read this from the Message Bible. Amen. It says, "You who sit down in the high in the high God's presence, spend the night in Shaddai's shadow. Say this, God, you're my refuge." I trust in you and I'm safe. That's right. He rescues you from hidden traps. Shields you from deadly hazards. <laughs> His huge outstretched arms protect you. Under them, you're perfectly safe. His arms fend off all harm. Fear nothing. Not wild wolves in the night nor flying arrows in the day. Not disease that prowls through the darkness. Not disaster that erupts at high noon. Even though others succumb all around. Drop like flies right and left. No harm will even graze you. You'll stand untouched. Watch it all from a distance. Watch the wicked turn into corpse. Yes, because God's your refuge. 
the high God your very own home. Evil can't get close to you. Harm can't get through the door. Hallelujah. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, especially to the doers of his word. We have protection and security. Amen. Listen, in this day and time, and we just got finished with our little series, uh, the times that we're living in, the devil is showing his ugly head the more. Do you hear me? But, 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 but Satan has to show his head. Why? Because God has ordered him to. You see, the devil works for God too. Amen. He does. And, 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 and he got to do what God tells him to do. He's the only being that I know that works for and contra try to contradict the same God that we serve. He tells us not to do what God tells us to do. <laughs> and yet he turns around and do what God tells him to do. Why? Because the times are evil. The time is winding up. And God has begun to put things in motion that is drawing us closer and closer to the return of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And, and, and the devil is a part of the plan. Glory to God. And, and so this morning I want to remind you that, 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 that even though Satan is doing what he's doing and the world is wicked and all of that, God is still in control. Hallelujah. And, 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 and just knowing he's in control is not enough. You got to know that we have protection and security from our God. Is that all right? As we begin to talk of, of, of protection and security, we clearly see that man's effort to protect himself from harm and danger is nothing like the protection and security of our God. Man can purchase all type of expensive weaponry, stand on guard day and night, and yet fail to protect and secure our borders and our country from foreign and domestic enemies. Lord, have mercy. When we look back at the beginning of the coronavirus crisis, it was revealed to us that our medical teams around the country did not have enough PPE or personal protection equipment to do their job. And it shows us that man has a faulty system of protection and security. These brave men and women did not feel secure nor protected as they were striving to save others that were dangerously infected with this deadly virus. Their protection and security have, have been compromised by this invisible enemy that was sweeping through the land at an alarming rate. We never seen anything like this before. And I want you to know, though they don't speak of it, but it's getting worse. Mm. Those that have hid behind their money walked in prestige and power could not escape the hand of the enemy panic uncertainty and fear gripped the world like no other time in my life sure there has been some other horrible crises in this land but this one had an element to it that all people were potentially affected. Lord have mercy. The old, the middle-aged, 
the young, the rich, the middle class, the poor, the white, the black, the brown, and all nationalities have become subject to this virus. And there is yet no cure. <laughs> yes, our sinful world is full of danger. Injuries, disasters, and diseases that take place in our everyday life. Saints, we never know when we might contract or uh, come in contact with a serious illness, be involved in an accident, or find ourselves in the midst of a disaster. We never know. But it's one thing that I do know. We have protection and security. Hallelujah. I said we've got protection and security. I need to make sure this is in your spirit because you have to look to God for your protection and your security. Hallelujah. So above all and beyond these perils, the greatest threat in our world is the evil perpetrated initially by Satan and his wicked empire of demons and men who has always posed a very real threat to all of the true followers of Christ. Lord have mercy. Now let's be honest. The dangers of life and its ongoing threats can leave us feeling insecure. In spite of our best efforts to protect ourselves, we know that we cannot totally shield ourselves from harm. Uh, I wish I could get a witness. Hallelujah. There were so many believers that died during the corona spread. So many believers have died in other disasters. Hurricane Katrina, we lost a lot of believers. Tornado Alley in Oklahoma, we lost a lot of believers. We lost some sinners too, but we lost believers. So, so we know, we know that there's going to be trouble. We know that there's going to be disasters. We know. But God, said he would protect us. And I believe that uh, the, the, the saints, the soldiers that we lost, they were ready to go home. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, Job said, man that is born of a woman is full of trouble. <laughs> full of trouble. Lord have mercy. You can't avoid it. You can't you can't run from it. You got to stand still and see the salvation of God. Hallelujah. So for generations and centuries, God's people have turned to Psalm 91 for comfort and courage because it reminds us that God is our security. I want to make you aware of something very important this morning. Please follow me closely. Psalm 91 seems to promise that those who live close to God will be exempt from harm, exempt from disaster, exempt from disease. This impression presents a problem. Why? Because many who faithfully abide in Christ do experience harm. <laughs> I know what they told you. Everything all right. It is with your soul. But as long as you're human and you're right here on this earth, you got to deal with what you got to deal with. Lord, have mercy. Y'all didn't like uh, we do encounter and sometimes perish in disasters. We do contract serious 
diseases. And, and then what about the persecuted? What about the mortars? So, so the experience of God's people does not agree with the supposed promises of this psalm. I'm not trying to confuse you. I want you to see this. I want you to hear this. Because when we get in a little trouble, first thing we want to do is throw our hands up. Quick. Throw in the towel. That's the first thing that comes to mind. Lord, I'm tired. Lord, I shouldn't be dealing with this. I'm sick of this. Lord, can I, can I get a witness in here? Hallelujah. The answer to this dilemma is found correctly understanding to whom these promises were made. Psalm 91 speaks to specific promises of God's covenant with Israel. Now this is very important. Two specific perils are prominent in this psalm. The peril of enemy attack and the peril of pestilence or plagues. Let's look at these perils as they stand out in God's covenant conditions and promises in the book of Deuteronomy. Somebody get Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse number 12 through 24. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 12 through 24. Anybody got that? Uh-huh. Uh-huh, that's, third, yeah, that, that's good right there. You can read the rest on your time, but I wanted to bring that out. These were conditional promises. Israel, if you follow me and do what I tell you to do, I got you. And if you don't, I will withdraw my hand. And I'm going to let you see what the devil can do to you. So these promises and covenant was initially for Israel. But in reading Deuteronomy and Psalm 97, there is a connection between them. These promises were made to Israel as part of the old covenant. And they were conditional on Israel's faithfulness to God. They are about God's dis disciplinary judgment on those who are unfaithful to him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Does, does that make sense to you? Does that, do you, do, do you follow me? As long as Israel remained faithful to God or made him the dwelling or refuge, he would protect them from their enemies and from deadly diseases. Turned from God and broke their covenant, he would lift his hands of protection. Now, it makes sense now because God had to tell them they saw him work in Egypt. <laughs> he told them not to have another God before him. He said, Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Y'all my people. And here's the rules that I have for you. And I want you to follow this closely. This is my covenant because I am a holy God. I want you to be holy. And so God gives them promises under conditions. Hallelujah. So, these promises were not made to the church. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I wish I could get some Bible readers. In fact, Jesus promised his followers exactly the opposite. They and we would face harm. They and we would be persecuted. Listen, if the promise
promises of Psalm 91 were to be to the church, then they were broken in the first generation of Christ's followers. They were broken. Why? Because the apostles were beaten and imprisoned. History tells us that all of them died as martyrs. Mm. Lord have mercy. Let me, I got to So how then, then, does Psalm 91 apply to us? First, we must study it in light of John 15. And Jesus is teaching on abiding in him. Amen. Abiding in him. Now this is what the church has failed to do. Abide in Christ. That's why we got so many crazy doctrines that are coming, up, are coming along. And they are wreaking havoc on the church. Just like God told Israel what to do, Jesus told us to abide in him. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. So if you stay in me, you can't lose. <laughs> Glory to God. If, 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 you, if, you would just, if you would just abide in me, I will protect you and I will secure you even though you may die for my sake. You still mine. Lord, have mercy on us. Second, we should study Psalm 91 in light of the promises God has made to us, the believers of the new covenant. As new covenant believers, God has not promised us total protection from peril. Now, I know it sounds a little contradictory, but he didn't promise us. He didn't give us no conditions. He didn't say, well, if you don't stay saved, he didn't say, well, if you don't do this, do that. But no, you're going to deal with some problems because you're going to be fighting an invisible enemy. <laughs> Glory to God. Israel saw their enemies. Seemed like they had more, much more advantage. They could react faster. They, they could deal with it quicker. But we don't know when and where the devil is coming from. Next thing we know, boom, we done got hit. But God has said that I sent a Savior to protect you even when you get hit. Because now when you get hit, you ought to be calling on me. Lord, have mercy. You ought to be calling on me before the enemy comes. But most of us will not go to God until trouble hits our home. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so, God has promised his presence in and through all things. He will be with us because he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I'm not going to take the trouble away. <laughs> Why? Because trouble don't last always. Hallelujah. And, and, and trouble helps us in our faith. If you ain't had no trouble, you ain't going to believe God. You ain't going to call on his name. Most of us is going to go home and take it easy. We ain't going to call on God for nothing. Everything is peachy cream and we good to go. But as soon as the devil start acting a plump fool, we call on God. In which we should. Because you see, God has the power to rebuke the devil. Glory to God. And I'm telling you, the Bible is right and somebody's wrong. 
Glory to God. He said, he said, I will rebuke the devourer. He's talking to tithers now. Lord have mercy. He said, I will rebuke. I will rebuke. I strongly disagree with what you're trying to do to my child. I said, back up. Get away from him. This is my servant. This is my child. Hallelujah. Scripture tells us that the new covenant is established on better promises than the old. And if you don't believe me, read Hebrews 8 and 6. Whereas Israel was promised God's conditional protection, we are promised God's unconditional presence. In his presence is where I want to be. In his presence is where I want to be. The problem in the church now is that we don't want his presence. And since we're not in his presence, we got to be somewhere else. Dealing with some devils or allowing the devil to control our lives because we have not gotten into the presence of of God. My God, I feel like preaching. Lord, have mercy. I feel like preaching. And so, under the old covenant, the people had to dwell in God. <laughs> under the new covenant, God dwells in us through the Holy Ghost. devil was a fool to kill Jesus. Lord have mercy Lord. That's another message another time. Let's look at the text quickly here. Careful. Verse 1 says draw near. Live in God's presence. We are too in and out of God's presence. One day we want to pray and praise and worship. And the next day, we act like we got amnesia. We get stupefied, crazy than crazy. We act like we don't need God for that day. Mm, mm, mm. So, so, so he says, draw near, live in God's presence. There is a secret place. The Hebrew word is seether. A hiding place. A place where we can be concealed and covered. Where we can be secure. The psalmist identifies this secret place as under God's wings. Oh, have you ever seen a big eagle fly? <laughs> How far he spreads out his wings. Man, that's a massive. That is amazing. Lord, have mercy. This image not only speaks of protection and security, but also closeness and intimacy. God, under the shadow of his wings. Now, y'all know that when you walk in the sun, how your body casts a shadow. The Bible says under the shadow of his wings. <laughs> Lord, I hope y'all got that. We have protection and security because of who God is. The most high. Elion. He is the highest. The supreme being. The architect and owner of the universe. And as such, he is all Powerful and cannot be overthrown. Lord have mercy. His name alone annihilates and cuts every threat down. The Almighty or Shaddai, He is sufficient for everything we need. By His inherent power, He sustains us, He protects us, and He provides for us. Where else 
do you want to be? Where else can you go and get this kind of benefit for your life, for your children's life, for your family's life? Under the shadow of the Almighty, there is protection and security. Glory to God. Can I move a little bit deeper? The Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah, he is the faithful God who makes a covenant with us and keep his covenant with our faith. He keeps all of his promises always. My God, Elohim, emphasizes the fullness and exceeding greatness of God's power. If God would really release his power, it would destroy the universe. Not the earth alone, but the entire universe. Not by power. Not by spirit, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. You don't want, you can't take the full brunt of his anger. You can't deal with it. I don't care who you are. But the devil's going to see and all of God's enemies are going to feel and see the work of Almighty God when he comes and causes vengeance upon his enemies. Lord, have mercy. Verse number two, because God is our security in all things, your refuge and your fortress. The psalmist understood who God was or who he is to his people. He was confident that the Lord was his personal security. I want to know this morning, are you confident enough to know that God is your personal security? Or do you rely on yourself? Do you rely on the systems of our world? Do you believe in our government more than you believe in the almighty God? Telling you this morning that we have protection and security. Hallelujah. What if that, that, that elementary school a few days ago would have just had some protection and some security? We would not have lost innocent souls. No security. Nobody watched. And if they were, they did nothing about it. Hallelujah. One thing we can know for sure, God is watching. God knows what's going on at all times. Glory to God. Yeah, he understood who God was and who he is to his people. He was confident that the Lord was his personal security. David had so many experiences with God that he could testify. He kept me from my crazy sons. <laughs> my son tried to kill me. My king tried to kill me. I had other nations fighting against me and wanting me dead. I know that I shouldn't have never been able to bring the Goliath down, but God was with me. He was my protection and my security. <laughs> the sword was bigger than David. David, all he had was a slingshot and some rocks. <laughs> Lord have mercy. God don't need a whole lot to protect you. He don't need a whole lot to secure you. Hallelujah. Do you hear me? We serve a mighty and powerful God. I don't care what you're going through. God can handle it. You stop trying to handle it. Let him do. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. 
I can't get no witnesses in here. I said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. This battle is not yours. <laughs> it's the Lord's. Now listen, a refuge is a shelter from trouble or danger. A fortress is a sage or a secure place that is inaccessible to the enemy. So the writer declared that he would continually trust in the Lord. Why? Because he's my fortress. And he's my refuge. <laughs> he would fully depend on God for protection and security. And he would faithfully run to him when threatened by danger or trouble. Let me tell you something, y'all. I know that we've got a multiplicity of things going on in America alone. And we, instead of joining with these political parties, instead of getting on Facebook or aligning ourselves with these so-called heavy-duty preachers or churches, we need to call up on God. He said, if my people which are called by my name, if they would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and, I, and, I, and I'll heal the land. I'll heal the land. Do you hear me? I'll heal the land. Ain't no healing going on because we didn't do what he said. Hallelujah. This, this gun control is going to get way out of control. Because we need God to deal with these politicians who won't listen to the people. Because it's all about money. Glory to God. The NRA and the RAE, whatever they may be, they don't care about human lives. I know guns don't kill, but you put them in the wrong hands. You ain't, you ain't looking at nothing. You don't care if he's 17, 18, you're selling a semi-automatic weapon. What do you need that for? You can't use it on the range. You can't use it for nothing but for, for mass destruction. Listen, the military don't even have these kind of guns. Lord have mercy. Did y'all know that? The military got an M16, M17 weapon. And they don't even compare to what's on the street. Lord have mercy. Then you turn around and sell them body armor. Who, as an American citizen, need body armor? The police the force cannot even get the proper body armor. Soldiers in America don't have the proper body armor. But you turn around, you turn around and, 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 and sell it to a criminal. Hallelujah. That's why we need God's protection and his security. Hallelujah. And, 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 and God will protect us through his son, Jesus Christ. God will secure us through his son, Jesus Christ. Somebody give the Lord a hand. I'm, I'm almost done, I promise you. I'm almost done. Verse 3, believe God, trust him to help you. You don't have a problem that's too big for God. You don't have a situation that's too small for God. Our problem is we're not getting answer to our prayers because we don't have no faith. We don't believe God to be who he says he is. We don't trust him enough because we act like God don't know what he's doing. He asked Job a question. Job, where were you? Where were you when I put the stars in the galaxy? Where were you? What were you doing when I did all of this? And I want to ask you this.
this morning. Who you think you are to not believe and trust God? You better wake up and believe him. God will go to work for those who have faith in him. God will go to work for those who trust him. God will deliver us from the enemy's traps and fatal plagues. Now the snare of the fowler and the noisome or deadly pestilence represent all the dangers we face in life. The fowler was a hunter of birds and he symbolizes those who seek to harm or destroy. A pestilence was a dreaded, deadly disease or epidemic. <laughs> Coronavirus. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Lord, the devil is trying to wipe out humanity. Before they get a chance to say, save me, Lord. Do you hear me? And he's working hard. Feverous, feverously. He's working 24 7, 724. He is on his job. And here we are, fussing and cussing over something that means nothing. Lord have mercy. You park your car in my in my parking spot. Really? Why you look at me like that? Really? We got the same hat on. Girl, I knew I should have changed clothes. And the spirit of God doesn't have freedom to flow and have people deliver. The spirit of God does not have room to operate because we come in with all of this carnality. We come in with this foolishness. The Bible says enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And to his courts with praise. We didn't come to praise God. We come to look at what you got on. Hallelujah. Come to judge the preacher. Come to critique the preacher. Your mind ain't nowhere near God. And so. Verse number four. I'm just about finished. He will cover and protect us under his wings. For sure, God is omnipotent or he's all powerful. He will cover and protect us under his wings of care when we stay close to him. That is the key, staying close to him. Staying close to him. Come on, somebody help me say it. Stay close to him. Stay close close to him. We so close to the TV it's unreal. Hallelujah. We are so close to the mall that it's unreal. We are so close to everything and everybody but God. Lord have mercy. Now the writer compared God's care for his people to a bird gathering her young under her wings in order to protect them. <laughs> the Lord will be our refuge covering and protecting us in the dangers of life. The truth of faithfulness of God will be our shield and our buckle. The shield was a large rectangular piece of armor that a soldier would hide behind and be completely covered. The Hebrew word for buckler is sorcery, sorcery. It appears only here in the Old Testament. It refers to the smaller handheld shield used in close combat. We must understand that God has given us his faithful promises to use as our armor for life's battles. Listen, I don't care what it is. It makes no difference to God. Whatever it is, God will protect you. God will deliver you. God will set you free. I don't care what the devil done. I don't care how long you done it, how long you done it, and who you done it with. God, in his power, in his infinite wisdom, knows 
finish my last little piece right here. Verses 5 through 7. God will assure or reassure us through all fearful situations. Now remember, long as we are in this earth, we're going to deal with all kinds of situations. Amen. So you may as well get ready. The problem is that we're not ready. <laughs> Amen. The best defense is to have a good offense. Hallelujah. You got to be ready to fight the devil. You got to be ready to fight the devil at a moment's notice. Do you hear me? Because if you don't, he going to run over you. He going to dog you. He's going to get his way. But I come to tell you this morning that God will equip you. Have you ready for the enemy? God will set you up to walk on serpents, to tread upon demons. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'll be glad. I'll be so glad. And God, please start with me. When we get back to the days that when we pass by folk, they know we've been with God. Ain't a devil in hell, out of hell, will be able to stop us. Hallelujah. The Bible is true. He said, and in my name, ye shall cast out devils. We ain't casting out nothing because we scared. 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 Don't want to do what God said do. And so now the devil, he know you scared. He know you ain't reading your Bible. He knows you ain't fasting. He knows you're not praying. He knows that you ain't close to God. Hallelujah. Y'all, somebody say amen. Amen. Somebody say amen again. So God's powerful and protective presence reassures us in a fearful situation of life. I've heard many testimonies when people have about to be in a terrible accident. The car starts flipping and moving crazy and the first thing they do is call on Jesus. Jesus! And he'll he'll put it right back the way it's supposed to have been going. Hallelujah. If God can do that on the highway, what make you think? He can't do it privately. When them demons come up against you, and I'm telling you, Satan want to fight you in your sleep. He want to deal with you when you're by yourself. He wants you to think evil. He wants you to think wrong. And what you got to do is use the word of the living God. God. 